welcome to the set of Attack Wrap. I'm your host, Nick Kennedy, here on Rogers TV. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Before we jump into our interview for the show, we're going to highlight a couple of players across the league that have uh, garnered the Player of the Week title. So coming out of uh, Ottawa here with the 67, Samuel Mayer getting Player of the Week with three goals and three assists, six points this past week. Uh, during the regular season, played all or played about 69 games there, 21 goals, 32 assists, and 53 points. So a great week there from Samuel Mayer on defense there in Ottawa. Your goaltender of the week going to Jacob Oster with three wins, a 1.19 goal against average, and a 9.54 save percentage. So great work there from Jacob. Oshawa moving on now to the next series as well. Uh, and I'd like to welcome our two guests in studio. We've got uh, interim head coach Darren Rumble, and on Zoom we have assistant coach Sean Tekel. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having us. Yeah, appreciate that. Thanks for having us, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to. I wanted to start. I mean, um, you know, I, I understand as much as you can understand being outside of. Uh, you know, not in a coaching role. I understand how much you guys really have to sacrifice to be here. And so I just want to, one, thank you for joining us, obviously, on the episode. But I want to start with a big thank you to both of you gentlemen. Uh, you know, you've sacrificed a lot to be here this year. You, you've you given away your weeks and your weekends with, you know, barely a day off all year. You're away from family and friends, all just to to develop hockey players here in Owen Sound. And, and that gives us something to bring our families to uh, each night. So... Uh, appreciate that it gives us an opportunity to unplug from work and school for just a couple hours so thank you to both you guys for what you sacrificed in your service to the team in the city this year um, being a coach it's uh, seems like a relatively thankless job um, and I'm wondering how you guys as coaches deal with that uh, you know in this professional sphere um. Well, you know, first of all, we're in it because we love it. Mm. Uh, you know, we wouldn't wouldn't want to do anything else. Um, but you're right. Yeah, when when you're you know, there's no better high than than uh, after a big win and mm -hmm. you know uh, the atmosphere around the locker room and around the guys. It's uh, you know, there's there's nothing that can rival that. And on the flip side of that, there's there's no hole enough uh, a hole deep enough to hide in when you're on a seven eight game losing streak. So right. um, there's definite highs and lows. Um, uh, in in all sports for for all uh, players and coaches, but uh, we signed up for it. We love it, and uh, you know that's it, it. For me, anyway, it's as close to uh, playing as you can get. Uh, right. uh, being in the battle with the guys down down in the trenches on the bench, so sure. uh, wouldn't wouldn't uh, change it for anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sean, for you, do you yeah. have like a? Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I have to add on to what Darren was saying there. Like you know, it's. Like for us, it's both of us, it's, it's our passion. Um, and it's, it's something that kind of drives us. And exactly like you said, um, you know, when you're away from your family and you're away from, from friends and you're, you don't have your weekends and stuff like that. Um, I know at least for me, like my biggest thing is I, I get pretty close to the players. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like they become like little brothers to me and uh, you know, they're like, they're away from their families too. Right. So it's sometimes they need family figures or they need father figures and they need leadership and they need guidance. So um, kind of drawing that whole group together, I think is something that we both relish on. I think the majority of coaches relish on you kind of, you get a family away from a family, um, you know, and you could see there kind of at the end, tail end of it with, uh, with Denny Gore and Burr and, and uh, said, you know, like how much those guys meant to this organization and how much they meant to me uh, being with them for a few years. And, you know, it's, it's sad to see them go, but it's amazing to see what they do. And those are kind of those relationships where you hang on to when you're away from your family, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate, well, I appreciate the, the uh, uh, I appreciate that. How, how do you guys, um, how do you deal with, you know, maybe when you get negativity from fans or, or positivity from fans, like, do you have a way to, um, to kind of, you know, get a little bit of escapism from that? Or how do you guys sort of reset, make sure that you're, you know, you're ready to go for each game? Um, I, I think you just have to keep doing what you believe in mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, focus on what you're doing. Um, try to, it's the same for a player. Um, you know, like let's let's use uh, Carter George for instance. He's he's got a lot of uh, white noise going on this year with, right. you know, it's his draft year. 
Um, you know, he's doing two, three interviews per weekend. Yeah. Um, you know, social media uh, mm -hmm. talking about how, how well he's doing. So there's a lot of white noise that can that can get in uh, the way of, of what he's trying to, to focus on. So for us, uh, you know, no difference. Just try to keep doing what you believe in and, and uh, focus on what you're doing and the task at hand and um, try not to get too involved in, in the external stuff. Great, great. Um, yeah, I think, uh, like, especially too, like coming off that, like not getting involved too much with it and just understanding what you're doing. Like, you know, they're not, your fans aren't at the rink Monday to Thursday when we're preparing. They're not there every day when you're, you're hammering your face into the computer, you know, you're, you're doing get practice plans, you're doing this, you're doing that. They're not there every day. So they don't really see that. And that's kind of the same thing that we tell other players too. Like, you know, they can criticize all they want. They don't see you every day, day in and day out. So they right. don't know that that you are they don't know the character you got they don't know the drive that you got they just see that 60 minutes of when you're a player and then they don't see anything else so you know that doesn't eclipse you as a person it's just a small sample size that they're getting of you excellent so how, how do you and, um i guess how do you manage stuff like that where you know you've got players that are on social media like you guys were, were mentioning how there's just a lot of buzz around that and you know a guy like carter who's going through interview after interview it feels like players these days they're they're curating their skills on the ice but also a a uh, personality or a persona on social media does that play a part at all in your coaching like do you have to almost coach them in social media as well or do you leave that for for agents or parents or yeah um you know we've we at numerous times especially with carter um would have him in and just encourage him to continue to focus on stopping pucks mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. you know taking care of his body and being uh you know excellent in practice like he is every day and uh worry about competing in the games and and not worry about that uh external noise because mm -hmm. you know I, I remember you know several times i just told him carter you're going to get drafted so yeah. don't worry about june that'll take care of itself just come in and try your best to focus on stopping pucks and, and being right. a good person and um i think he did a great job of that you know is it is it possible in today's world probably not <laughs> you yeah. know i think it's impossible yeah. to uh, avoid all that noise with with social media the way it is but uh you know you can certainly try to limit it at, at least and uh sure try, you know there's an old old saying that i like that's uh, ignorance is bliss you yeah, know so yeah. if you if you aren't aware of all that uh, external stuff uh, you know it can't possibly bother you right excellent so I'm taking it you're probably not like a big Instagram guy, like just. I have, to... I have it, but I think I've posted once in my entire life. <laughs> it was like a repost of some guy carving up an octopus or something. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Good to know. Sean, do you find yeah. uh, social media playing a part at all in your, your coaching style or some of the topics you bring up with the guys? Yeah, I think uh, for me it's. Yeah, I use it like I do train, training in the off season, so I use it as a, as a tool for my business as well. Um, it's it's just giving them another tool. You know, you look at guys, guys can put together tapes. So, you know, I think nothing really goes unseen. So it, I think it's got a real positive for some players. Um, you know, you, like you look at some guys like, you know, Kobe's going to get interest, like Ethan Burroughs is getting interest, Sam Sutherland's getting interest, right? And I think just teaching them the right way to use those things, they can use them to their advantage and, and hopefully it's not detrimental to them, but um, it goes both ways. I think social media can be such a good place, but at the same time, it's it can be a pretty negative and pretty dark place. So just tell them to take everything with a grain of salt on there and they just got to be mindful of what they're doing and what they're putting out there. Excellent. Yeah, players, it like seems like... Are facing a whole new uh, level of pressure that maybe players uh, before the social media era weren't uh, necessarily exposed to and you know thinking about um you know some of those pressures and and whatnot do you do you feel like um is is there more pressure from uh fan bases and stuff like that when when there's uh you know maybe a three game or four game losing streak uh do you feel like you're hearing more from fans then or or do you guys also get the positive side and and fans coming out and saying hey great work on a three and oh weekend um no, I don't. I don't think we we hear it. I mean, you know, if we're on a three or four game losing streak, nobody's going to uh, be be louder mm -hmm. in either of our ears uh, other than ourselves. You know, right. like we're going right. to be uh, talking in the office and trying to figure out what we need to do to get better. Mm -hmm. um, 
so not, you know nothing would would be louder than than our own voices in a, in a situation like that uh you know a couple of times during the year we we swept road trips we had yeah. you know nine games in a row with with points on the road all and and we did hear a lot of good stuff uh right uh during that time so um yeah i think you you hit it on the head you hear you hear a little bit of both mm -hmm. and uh like i said you just gotta keep doing what you're what you're doing believing in and uh you know, head down and keep going forward. Excellent, excellent. Um, you know, you guys talk a little bit about the, you know, the office times and Sean, you were talking about even just about having to be on the keyboard a little bit more than maybe what you'd want to do on the, the day in, day out kind of thing that fans don't get to see. What are some of those things that you guys are doing behind closed doors without spilling any uh, industry secrets here? Uh, are you, you know, are you guys having meetings over like plays or are you guys kind of, you know, writing up different ideas for drills. How, what what are some of those things that you guys would do that maybe fans wouldn't get to uh, get to see or understand? You go first on this one, Teeks. I think uh, for us, it's kind of a little bit of everything, right? We we got a big board in the middle between our two desks, so um, we spitball uh, drills, ideas, we spitball sport checks, we spitball whatever whatever's going on with the team. Um, obviously, pulling clips uh, from our games. Um, and also, you know, we're, we're both big believers in pulling clips from NHL team, right? And if that's where they want to go, um, we can pull stuff from there and show them what NHL teams are doing, you know, show guys, you know, we went to a one, three, one in playoffs and pulled clips from LA Kings and use that. Um, so it just gives them more proof that there should be belief in what we're doing. Um, and I know at least for me, you know, it's not just the hockey stuff. I got to do buses, got to do food. Uh, planning all the hotels, planning road trips, doing all that stuff. Um, honestly, it's it, it can be at times like a 12, 14-hour day um, doing all those things, putting out itineraries, making sure billets have what they need for their guys and making sure guys are calling curfew and all that stuff. It's it's more encompassing than, than what people think. It's not just hockey. So, um, you know, like I said before, like these guys are away from their parents. Um they need guidance. You know, sometimes they're going through tough times um, or they're going through good times. You know, sometimes just coming in the office and, and having a quick chat, um, being personal with the players. I think that's huge. You know, Rums and I talked about it a little bit, like just, just being there with the group and, you know, players nowadays, um, I'll be honest. I don't, I don't think they really care what you're saying until they know how much you care for them. Um, mm. And I think uh, doing that stuff for them, just being around the team, like, you know, we got them a ping pong table this year and just doing those little things for them. Just so they're having fun and coming to the rink. It doesn't feel like a job to them. Um, is, and it's a safe environment for them to come in and they're able to air out the problems and they're able to talk and they're able to try to figure things out. Because like I said, people only see them, fans only see them for that 60 minutes of the game, right? Like they don't see what they do leading up to it. They don't see the preparation. They don't see all that stuff. They don't see, a kid away from the rink that you know is having a tough time at school or or his girlfriend just broke up with him you know at the end of the day they're people too and they have their own problems they're not just robots they're not just hockey players they're people and we got to manage their emotions and help them along the way and figure out their way to be good young men it's an excellent i mean i don't know if you have anything to add or yeah no i i just to summarize all that, uh, you know, like videos, videos, video. It's 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 part of the game. It's a huge part of the game. But uh, I learned a long time ago. Sometimes the answer is not always on the computer. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, mm -hmm. like like Teach just just uh, touched on there. A lot of times there's something if a player's not playing well. Um, more times than not, it's it's something non hockey related. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like Teeks mentioned, there it could be a girlfriend, you know, something going on in the family, wh right. whatever the case may be. So, just need to be willing to, uh, you know, look uh, beyond the computer sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Well, this uh, this seems like a good opportunity then to maybe skip some of my uh, pre prepared questions and get to. Uh, gotta, I got just want to share a couple of things that I've I've noticed just about your guys' style this year that I've I've come to appreciate. Uh, you know, Darren, I, I would say for you, I, I really appreciate your. It seems like, at least from my perspective, way off into the stands, that you've got this this unwaveringness. Like it, uh, you know, from from everything I've observed, it seems like you're able to to coach through adversity as well as really good times with the same professionalism that you approach both with and and what I saw is it just looks like um, you're the kind of coach that players can rely on 
that uh, you know you're going to treat them the same in in any situation with consistency and and I'm just wondering what has um, what has being a stable presence among these young men um, what does that do for a team and and when did you come to kind of develop that uh, and and add that to your coaching style? Um, well, I, I mean. I, we had some teams uh, when I was in Moncton. Uh, we were, you know, we were. If you asked other teams about us, we would, uh, you know, we were always deemed a hardworking, mm. uh, sort of overachieving team. And um, you know, people would ask me, you know, periodically, how do you how do you get them to play so hard? And I said, you know, when when you think about it, and then uh, you get talking. And I think at the end of the day, we came up with it's a mutual respect. And I think at the end of the day, they don't want to uh, disappoint you. You yeah. know, so um, so I try to treat them with respect. Uh, I don't I don't extract respect from a player. Just try mm -hmm. to do my thing and, and try to earn earn it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's that's big for the players too, especially the the players that are in a leadership role. I've I've talked to uh, numerous players over the years that I've named captain and. I just uh, I, I said you're getting the C because you are who you are. You don't mm -hmm. need to do anything different. You don't need to be anybody other than yourself. Mm -hmm. Just do your thing and know that you'll you'll earn the mm -hmm. other players' respect. Um, and that's sort of the way I operate uh, in life too. Just uh, doesn't matter whether it's the person cleaning the clean the locker rooms or the owner of a corporation. I'm going to treat everybody with with respect. Give them my time and. Um, sort of try to earn earn respect. Well, and I, I think that's something that uh, that I noticed from you as well on the ice. I mean, there's times where you've got players that are going through a little bit extra conditioning or something like that after after practice, and like you've earned your stripes. You you've been through the the whole circuit. You've played pro. You've you've coached. You you've you've paid your dues, and here I am sitting there taking notes and probably eating a cookie. And there you are running the same conditioning drills. You, I mean, you've earned the, you know, sit back with the clipboard or the phone and take notes while they do it. And yet I, I watch you do those same conditioning drills alongside of them, it, it, you know, instead of maybe leading from a podium, leading by example. And uh, is that something that was instilled in you even as a player or is that something you've developed in your uh, coaching? Yeah, I just, I, I've, I've never had a coach uh, do the conditioning skate with me, so I, I, I kind of enjoy it. I, I, you know, like to try my best to stay fit, but also um, there's no way anybody can ever complain about something that they're doing if if uh, if the coach is doing it with them. So, right. uh, sort of takes a takes out any opportunity for anybody to complain that something's too hard. So. Sure. <laughs> it's that, that old adage that a good leader never asks his, his team or his players to do yeah. something he's not willing to do himself. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Sean, I, I haven't left you out either. I got uh, I got stuff for you as well. I, I, I like to brag about our guests here because I know you guys are too humble to do it yourselves. So, <laughs> um, you know, Sean, the last time you were on the show, we were uh, we were talking a little bit about uh, the the forward hat uh, coach Teeks and the backward hat uh, coach Teeks and and uh, just how the guys would would light up when that hat uh, goes on backwards at the end of practice. But I, I think as I as I watched you a little bit more this year and and watched from the stands, I realized that it was more than just having fun with with these guys. You know, you're you're not here just for fun or just for a paycheck, but you really do seem to truly want to help these guys succeed like it looks like you love helping them to develop their game and to, de to develop their skills and I was wondering when did you realize that you had this this talent for uh, developing hockey players and developing their skill um it, it happened fairly young kind of in my in my coaching career I don't I'll be honest with you it kind of was like sort of what Rum said there I never really had a coach that took me under their wing and like really was like really worked with me. Um, you kind of had to do things on my own or had to ask my dad or, or whatever it was. And I kind of had to figure it out. Um, so I felt like giving that to guys, same sort of thing. Like they don't have an excuse, you know, and, and when I do stuff with them, I want them to know again, like it goes back to what I said before, like players don't care what you have to say until they know you care. So I want them to know that I care what they're doing with their development. I don't want you out there just, just shooting pucks for the sake of shooting pucks. You know, like, mm. let's do it with an authority. Let's do it the right way. Let's, let's work on picking up off the wall or whatever it is. Um, but I, I learned that pretty early on. I think my first ever coaching thing, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. It's just 
it's always been a passion and you know i may not seem like it but i'm a guy with a ton of energy like when i get out there it's just it's energy and i want to go and i want to have fun i like tempo um so i think it was just something that came very natural to me and it, honestly it's not something that i prescribed it's not something i sat down and like wrote to myself um it just came natural and that's just who i am as a person and you'll you'll find or you can talk to guys that have played for me before like they know I genuinely care for them as people. Um, so I care about their development. I care about what they're doing. I want them to walk away from Owen Sound and be like, yeah, you know what? The coaches cared and they took the time, regardless of where they end up, the coaches took the time to help me with my game. And, you know, that makes a difference. And that shows them that, that you actually have time for them. Um, and it just, it goes a little bit further that way. So um, I just always want to instill that in my players. Excellent. You know, I, I think kind of building off of that, something that I, I noticed from you this year, uh, you know, a couple of couple of tough weeks. And, and um, as a coach, I mean, you know, sometimes you, you got to throw on the, the, the real coaching hat and, and kind of, you know, inspire the guys or call them out on on certain things. And I remember uh, this one time where uh, you guys were, were had the guys kneeling on the ice at the other at the other opposite side of uh, the rink and um, you know, I, I watch you very, uh, very um, calculated uh, in, in your delivery of this, but really calling them to account and, and loudly at that. But, um, you know, something that, you know, maybe somebody walking by who, who has never watched a practice would go, oh, man, he might be upset right now. But I, I think it was more than that. Like you in that moment, um, it looked like you really, really had uh, the absolute best intentions and and really cared about these guys and helping them get better and and it was done loudly and firmly but it what what surprised me in that moment was how much respect you delivered it uh with and and to the players like it looked like you also respected them as, with the same amount of respect that that you would hope they show you and and uh you know I, something that not a lot of fans get to see and so want to make sure we can highlight that but is that a strength that you had even during your playing career or uh you know is that something that you've kind of had to build and 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 work on and and has made you into the coach that you are today yeah i don't like that's not i'll be honest with you a lot of a lot of the stuff that comes coaching wise it's not x's and o's for me is honestly just me as a person um mm. people will find i'm extremely honest um oh. and, and i think the player is really really at the time they may not like what they're hearing but at the same time they're always going to understand where they sit with me um mm -hmm. and i think that's something that that's big for the group like yeah you know what it might have been loud at the time but you know like you said it, we could have been on a streak or whatever it was or we could have been coming off a road trip and i'll be honest with you sometimes i think as a coach the tempo of practice and the way practice is going sometimes is your job to figure it out you know a lot of times oh. you put it on the players a lot of times you put it on them but i think you know what? Sometimes it's it's our time to put our foot down and be like, okay, like, this isn't good enough, right? So, um, in those situations, I feel like I feel like it's just a feel thing. I think that's something that I'm gonna come naturally by. And I think um, I worked with Andre Tierney, who works in Arizona, as head coach in Arizona Coyotes for a few years, and he just taught me that you know what, like you got a couple of those bullets every year. You know, you got maybe four of those bullets every year where you can kind of pull the group in and give them a delivery. But I think they'll know when I deliver it like that, at the end of practice, I'm the first guy to hug them. I'm the first guy yeah. to laugh up with them and all that stuff. And, you know, it's just in that moment, it's it's time to work. It's time to get our jobs done. You know, we only have a certain amount of time. We don't have unlimited ice time. Um, and I think when it comes to that respect factor, it's, you know, it might sound a little bit crazy to some people, but I think, you give the player respect, the player gives you respect back. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit twisted from what it used to be. You know, it was always used to be, you know, everyone, you respect your coach. And I think it's a little bit different now. Like we're such a player driven league um, that I always give them the utmost respect first. Um, and then I always seem to get it back. So um, that's sort of another way that I express myself to know, let them know that I care and that I respect them. Right. Like, you know, like for those people, not everyone sees them on the daily grind, right? And you can see when you give them that respect, they understand it. Like, you know, Rums has been through it. I've been through it. There's some days where you're out there and you're like, I really do not feel like practicing today. You know, so sometimes you just kind of drag them through that little bit of mud there and, and they get they come out on the other side and they're and they're better for it.
Well, that's that's awesome, and and I mean, looking at this season as well, you guys uh, you guys had every reason to to kind of mail it in one day or another. I mean, you've got, uh, you know, obviously unexpected bench changes. You've got your star player injured for like half the year. You've got a bus in the ditch in the middle of a snowstorm getting dragged out by a backhoe. Like <laughs> you guys had, had every reason to just be like, all right, you know what? You know, we just need a day this Tuesday or this Monday and, and mailing it in. And, and yet, I, I think every time I showed up to the rink, I saw you guys smiling. I saw the players smiling. And, uh, you know, it, it just looked like you guys were, were excited to be there and, and ready to play. And, and uh, you know, I, as I think about that, I, I hope that to, I hope even though we, you know, maybe didn't get the results you're looking for, I do hope it's a season that, that you guys look back on and, and feel proud about. And, uh, do you guys have like a highlight from this season that uh, you feel like is one of those things that you're just going to kind of put in that uh, that coaching wallet memory <laughs> folder in, in the book? With you? Yeah, in the, yeah. Every every year, you know, every guy that's in in hockey playing coaching it says, "Oh, I'm going to put that in my book at mm -hmm. the end of it." So yeah, you just you you mentioned a few things that'll go in my book uh, someday. The bus in the in the field and yeah. Um, you know highlights uh, obviously sweeping you know the, the couple road trips there that's yeah. that doesn't happen very often the the road is a tough place to play and and our guys were were road warriors this year um you know watching carter george put on uh, many stellar performances was was pretty uh was pretty you know astonishing um you know we had some some great nights uh I think after game three, the guys got a, a standing ovation from the crowd, yeah. so that was pretty special. Yeah. Uh, I think they they recognized how hard they played and yeah. how hard they worked. So, um, yeah, there was a ton of ton of those. I, I, uh, I think Teeks would agree. Jumping in the uh, the bay was pretty yeah. fun there. Yeah. 30, 36 degree uh, temperature <laughs> water. We jumped in there as a team. Uh, I'm not sure what I was thinking, suggesting that, but uh, we we battled through it, and uh, you know that those are those things that. In 30 years, you, you 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 don't forget. Like I can't remember yeah. what I did yesterday half the time, but there's a few things over the course of your life that you just never forget. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, you know those are if you can have the more of those that uh, you can create, uh, the better off everybody's gonna you know better off everybody's experience is gonna be. Excellent, uh, Sean. You got about 45 seconds to break, so I'll let you do a highlight here, and if we need more, we can come back with them. There's one for me, I think, is, is when we came back from uh, the 5-1 in Ottawa. Um, you know, a little story. I've never told anyone this. I, I might have told a few people, but Colby Barlow at the start of the third period came down, sat on the bench, and he grabbed my pants. And I turned around, and he looked at me, and he goes, I'm single-handedly going to win this game. And I was like, okay, man. I was like, do it. And he went on to score a hat trick and had an assist in the third period, and we won 6-5. So Amazing. I ended up in the bank yeah. right here. Yeah, that was pretty. That was a cool night. That's a great story. Uh, Doctor Momentum was on our side. Fantastic. Well, that's uh, those are the kind of things we love here, and and I'm sure the fans appreciate as well. We're gonna head into break here, and we'll be right back. We'll talk a little bit about the Saginaw series, and uh, looking forward to summer as well. Thanks for watching Rogers TV. We'll be right back after this break. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Buckle up, we're cleared for takeoff. Here we go, boys, here we go. 16 teams, one champion for the greatest trophy in sports. You know why I'm here. A time for new heroes to be born. This is a guy who wants to get to the Stanley Cup Finals. This is what I'm here for. Stanley Cup champions! I'm here. I'm here. I'm here for the Stanley Cup. They've reached the seventh. I'm here to win. The Stanley Cup playoffs. Here we go. Hello, Great County. I'm your warden, Brian Milne. Want to be the first to know about news, services, and decisions in your community? Watch Great County Council meetings live from the comfort of your living room, right here on Rogers TV, Great County. Are you the type who would keep going or stop? 
It's not easy to stop when you have an addiction. Legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction. It trivializes its consumption. Let's be vigilant. If you need help, visit portage.ca. gentlemen thank you for joining us again here on attack wrap on rogers tv i'm your host nick kennedy joined today by darren rumble and sean teekle talking all things uh this past year of owen sound attack action um thinking of the year is uh i mean sean you mentioned that uh, that 5-1 comeback win uh against ottawa there is there a game that uh that you guys kind of look to as like this is the prime example of how we want you to play and uh, kind of calling your players back to that memory. For me, it was game three of the mm. Saginaw series. I mean, that was... I thought we played well in game one. Uh, we played better in game two. And and then it was, for sure, it was our best uh, game of the of the year, mm-hmm. uh, game three against Saginaw. Unfortunately, they were a fairly, fairly deep team, so we didn't yeah. get the result, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But but as far as our play, um, that was, you know, I, I would say that was for sure our, our best game. Every, everybody played well. Carter played yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we executed well. Um, we defended well. We had great energy. We were physical. Yeah. It was just a good game. Excellent. Sean, was there a game for you that you feel like uh, it was one of those games that you're like, this is how I want you guys to play? Yeah, I would, I would agree. I think game three, game three was a really good game. Um, but if I could rack my brain a little bit, um, obviously that Ottawa game sticks out. Um, I think there was a game where I know we didn't, we didn't win huge, but I thought in Peterborough, then that same road trip, um, like we dominated them. I think, I think we, mm-hmm. we shot them like 53 to, to 21 or something like that. And we just, we carried play. We just, we got pucks in deep. We, just, we limited turnovers. Um, and I felt like we just played the game the right way. Um, I think sometimes, you know, as a coach, you know, everyone, everyone talks about X's and O's and everyone talks about all that stuff. And, you know, sometimes it's just getting players to play the game the right way. You know, you chip a puck in behind a guy when you got a lead, um, you know, you, you reload through the middle of the ice, you, you handle the puck on the blue line, you get pucks out, you block shots when we need it. Um, so I think that was, for me, that was kind of like a textbook game. And I'll be honest, another one was, the one the night we won, I think five nothing or five one in Kitch, um, would have been another one for me. I think we just we stymied them and they were a high flying team at that time and we just stymied them and I think we surprised them a lot in that game. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. I think yeah. That was uh, Georgie's fifty save shutout game as well. So that <laughs> was uh, that was quite a performance from him. Um, you know, looking at a lot of these positives as well, uh, without you know getting into hypotheticals and and what ifs and whatnot. Is there an area that uh, maybe you were looking for for our team to uh, be a little stronger in, or is there an area you feel like we struggled in a little bit this year? Uh, obviously, five on five offense was was uh, probably our number one weakness. Like we had, mm-hmm. we had uh, you know one of the top power plays, uh, yeah. you know, in the league all year. Our, our, our penalty kill was excellent, um, but our five on five uh, offense was probably near the bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, so. If we could, you know, have have gotten uh, more productivity from from that standpoint, sure. And uh, you know, that's everybody. You yeah. know, it's the yeah. it's the guys that uh, aren't on the on the power play. It's the it's the defensemen trying to create some some offense from the blue line. Um, so for me, that was that would be our number one uh, our number one you know area that if we could have back that that would be it. And then uh, I, I would also say second to that would be our our consistency with our with our work ethic uh Mm -hmm. you know game in game out i thought um you know and some sometimes it was while the other team was having a push or or we weren't at our best and we had uh you know i I would like to have uh, for us to have a little bit more stick to itness basically get through get through some of those pushes right right similar for you as well sean would you you'd say the same thing there Yeah, I would agree with Eric Rums. You know, I think uh, we had a successful year on the power play, setting a franchise record and percentage. Um, so we definitely scored a lot of goals like that. And like Rums said, we had a top four PK, I believe. And, you know, we're getting puck stopped by Georgie. And I just felt like that, that some nights just not getting that five on five offense um, didn't result in the, in the amount of wins that we wanted. Um, and, you know, it, it is what it is. And why that happened, um, it's, it's tough to say, you know, it's, it's 
comes down to players digging in and, and getting inside and going to the front of the net and, and stuff like that. And you know, the odd time maybe down the stretch, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind if we get, didn't give up as many shots as we did. Um, you know, like that was a lot of wear and tear, I think, on Georgie. Um, you know, especially as a 17 year old kid, you know, in his first full year as a starter. Um, it was a little bit of wear and tear on him. So um those two things I think would be would be on top of my list. Um, you know, I mean, you see, you're talking about Georgie and the number of shots he takes and how well he played this year, a 50 save shutout night for him. Um, you know, we talk a lot about the skills, but um, is there a moment this year where you feel like um, it was a highlight just for the character of the team, like, or a character of a player? Was there a moment where you're like, man, this guy, he stepped up in a big you know, character way. Maybe he wasn't the best on the ice, or maybe he wasn't the most prolific uh, on defense or or forward or whatever. But is there a moment where you're like, this guy stepped up in a big way? Well, I think uh, especially in playoffs, you know, we, we traded for for Connor Smith, and mm. um, you know, uh, obviously the probably some of his better games for us were the bigger games, mm. and uh, you always. Know, you know, it's always nice to see a guy who flourishes under the spotlight and yeah. and isn't afraid of the moment and all that stuff. And you know, some guys, you know, are looking for a rock to hide under, or um, you know, looking to just stay on the outside, just kind of get through it. Where I thought for him, he he played his best hockey in, in the bigger games, and um, you know, he was excellent, uh, especially the last you know game three, game four. He was he was laying out everybody, every yeah. anybody that came near him was going to get squished. Right, and uh, so I thought he showed the you know the tendencies of, of somebody that has won a championship and that's why you know when, when teams are trading for people they're always looking for guys that have won and uh, there's your example right there sure and Connor will give him uh, honorary Owen Sound Attack player of the week as well for yeah. a big yeah. game there with the San Diego Gulls picking up his first uh, first pro goal there you can see is uh, we'll get a different headshot for him next year on that uh, get gets <laughs> a, a bad mullet yeah yeah well Hopefully he uh, finishes growing that in, and we'll uh, get a get an old sound attack jersey on him for the next photo. Yeah. Um, great, Sean. Is there a moment that that stands out to you as just a a character moment for these guys? Yeah, like I would go back to that Ottawa game again. You know, I just think the the never die attitude. Um, you know, we we were right in that game the entire time. You know, it was, it was just gratuitous bounces and how they got that lead, and just the guys never wavered. Um, they just kind of pushed through and they kept going and, and it, it resulted in our way. And I, I would honestly say at times in the playoffs, you know, like that, those guys never folded the tent, you know, they easily could have after game two or game three, you know, exactly like what Rum said. I thought we progressively got better. Um, when it got to game two, like we game two easily could have been the other way. You know, we had a ton of chances. Um, I thought Oak played really well in game two. Um, and then game three, we don't get the result we wanted, but we were probably, arguably probably the better team in that in that in that game and in that sense and the one thing that I say is that group never quit and and they kind of kept going and and they kind of kept pressing and they always believed and they kept coming so um, I would say those two things really stick out to me excellent um you know a tough series obviously against Saginaw where uh you know you're going up against arguably the best team in the OHL right it's not going to be uh not going to be an easy series and and I think the guys probably knew that going in how do you um, how do you temper expectations? How do you manage those as a coach going into what you know is going to be, you know, if you're getting out of here, you're you're black and blue for sure. <laughs> well, that was that was actually our message. We wanted to make sure we were getting a pound of flesh every every chance we got. Um, you're right. They had 11 or 12 uh, NHL picks, and you know, arguably the the best defenseman in the league with uh, right. with the uh, Perak there. So. Um, yeah, just basically, you know, we we use the term several times during the uh, during the year. Don't dip your toe in the water and yeah. sort of see what the game's going to be like. You have to come out and, and attack and be on your toes and uh, take away time and space. It doesn't matter how good you are as, or talented as a player. If you have zero time and space, it's very difficult to make a play. So, yeah. um, taking away time and space, being physical, um, were certainly things that we were keying on. Excellent. Sean, for you, I mean, you know, being a, a guy who seems to really have his his finger on the pulse of uh, of where his players are at, you know, how, how do you how do you help them? How do you prepare them mentally for a series like this? You know, there was just belief. Um, you know, when we presented everything to them, um, I'll be honest with you, like between Rums and I, like we, we went and, and Paul Gibson, our our goalie coach, 
Um, we went Saginaw Spirit inside and out. Um, there wasn't going to be something that they were going to throw at us that was going to surprise us. Um, we prepared these guys, I think, any as best as we could. I don't think there's anything more that we could have done. Um, you know, it was hours upon hours for us at the rank preparing for this. And I think when they saw how much preparation went into it, they started to believe. And, you know, it, it really starts with our leadership group. Like, you know, Ethan Burroughs came to me, I think, as soon as the matchup came and he was like, we're, we're, we're beating these guys. And I'm like, 100%. You know, and that's that's kind of the, those two guys, having Colby and, and Burr at the top of the room with Sam Sedley. Those guys are real competitive guys. Um, they're never just going to lie down. And and if you're going to be one of those guys going to lie down, they're going to find a way to pick you up and drag you along. Um, so I think it was just belief and, and just being prepared and, and uh, just everyone in that dressing room really believed that we could beat them. Um, so we definitely give it the best shot we could. Awesome. That's great to hear. I mean, you know, after that game one, I, uh, I was sitting there watching and I go, they're, the spirit scared. Like they, they were scared of you guys after that first game, they weren't expecting the, the kind of drive, the kind of attack that, uh, no pun intended, of course, that you guys <laughs> were coming in with. And, and just like you said, that second period, it looked like, you know, maybe the, or the second game rather, you know, maybe the first period went more Saginaw's way, but second period was was easily split, maybe in Owen Sound's favor in that third period. I don't know how Oak shut the door, but, uh, yeah. you know, fan, he had a fantastic series and uh, mm. th- game three was I mean, that was my favorite game to watch all year. I, I had a great time there, and yeah. I was, I, I think I was standing near near uh, Dale DeGray there, and I, I was just like, I don't know how he's so calm during a game like that. I'm gripping the bar. I'm sweating. I can feel my palms slipping. Like, I don't know how you guys do that from behind the bench either. Well, uh, some people have change in their pockets that they fiddle with. Some people, yeah. like, I, I usually have a marker in my hands that... You know, I'm trying to divert my nervous energy. Uh, you know, Dale's probably nervous on the inside, but does a good job of not showing it on the outside. So yeah. he would have his methods to, to curb that. And um, you're right. Uh, like I know their Saginaw's coach very well. I worked with him a little bit. And so we would we were talking quite often during the series. And he was uh, impressed with, with how, how hard we were, we were working and how physical we were. Um, you know, he, he wasn't happy when, when he drew that matchup. He let me know that uh, before the before the series. So we, yeah. we're, we're hoping not to get you guys. Yeah, so yeah. Um, so I don't think we disappointed them. And, right. uh, you know, they, they knew they were in a series. And, and that's credit to, to our players. Yeah, it felt like, uh, you know, that series ending 4-0, like, wasn't anything to be ashamed of with, with the way that these guys played. And I'm wondering, like, for you guys as coaches then, how do you, after game four, um, I mean, there's no more games to prepare for. There's no more practice. Uh, what do you What do you say? Like, how do you approach a team, um, and how do you coach in those moments when there's nothing really like game wise to prepare for? Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what game you're playing and what the situation, what the scenario is. You're always being evaluated. Mm. Um, you know, how do you play in a game that doesn't matter? Uh, you know, like maybe it's the last game of the season and, and standings are fixed. Mm-hmm. So how does a guy play in, in a game like that? Because you can still learn a lot about a, a person yeah, or a player yeah. Yeah. In, in, in even that situation. Um, you know, I know after the game we went in and just, uh, you know, we were you know, we were in the moment with the guys. They were upset, a lot of tears. Uh, yeah. Obviously, it's. Um, I've been through, you know, so being in the game for so long, I've had, you know, 30 some last game of the years. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the only one team wins their last game. So right. usually you're going to be disappointed right. after your last game. So, um, you know, we thank our 20 year olds. Uh, it's pretty special that, that the three of them, such class people, yeah. uh, were able to be here for five years. I, I don't know if that's ever happened where you have three guys that were together for five years yeah, yeah. Uh, all elite players um, so we thank them I uh, wish them the best uh, you know I can't wait to see where they where they all end up we got yeah. our pom-poms on for those guys exactly and uh, you know just the, the message was just you know this burns in your belly so remember how this feels and, and take that into uh, next season for the guys that are coming back excellent excellent Sean, yourself, how do you how do you go into the dressing room? What are you? How are you coaching these guys after uh, after a game four loss like that? Yeah, like like Rump said, I think uh, especially for me, the first probably you know five to ten minutes was really emotional. Um, being so close with Ethan, Seds, and Denny, it, it was uh, you know it's like you said, it's so special for those guys to be there for five years. 
Um, but being so close to those guys and watching them, how emotional they are after that game, it really hit me. Um, you know, those guys, those guys love this team. They love this town. Um, they loved playing at the Bay Shore, and they loved everything about Owen Sound. They wouldn't, have, they wouldn't have been here for five years if they didn't. Um, so it was just, it was tough to watch that, and you know, just understanding for them, like they were here for five years and they never won a playoff series, you know, and, and that, that, that's a tough, I think that's a tough, tough pill to swallow, you know, especially with them with the, such character, you know, the character of Ethan Burroughs, the character of Seds, um, the skill of Denny Gore and those guys, you know, it's, it's surprising to hear that, but um, I was just so, so broken up for them, but I was so happy for them for what their futures are going to hold because all three of them are such special guys. Um, and the same thing, just going around the room, you know, telling the guys that you're proud of them and you're proud of how hard they battled and everything like that. And um, just kind of being in the moment with them. And like, like Grum said, it's, it's not just them. We, we spent an entire year with them as well. Right. And it's a lot of emotional stuff. You go through ups and downs and um, it kind of all hits you in one moment. And Rums can tell you like the next day after, like I was so sick, I think just, you know, your body's just so hyped up all the time and you're just ready to go. And it was kind of like once that, season ended it was like all my adrenaline dropped and it was just like oh, oh i got sick right away um <laughs> so i think uh it just kind of hits all at once and you go through definitely a wealth of emotion but um the first thing that i would say is just being so proud of those guys and that group and hoping them all the best with, uh, without giving us too much of the gory health things that go on there on that last day of uh being around the team after a, a loss uh you know, and, and without giving personal details, could you guys kind of walk us through what it looks like for an OHL player and then an OHL coach on, uh, you know, following a, a playoff series loss on that final day with, you know, exit interviews and clean out and stuff like that? Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's a, you know, we mentioned it before the game that, uh, you know, that was sort of our rally and cry going into the game. We didn't want this to be our last day mm -hmm. together as a group. Um, so, you know, so the next day is, you know, reality is set in. Uh, the guys, you know, there's a schedule. Guys are going to come in for 15 or 20 minutes per player, and you just go over, uh, you know, the, how, the, how they thought the season went, how we thought the season went, any concerns, uh, you know, summer training plans, yeah. uh, you know, what your, what, you know, what next year holds in for, for you know, for the guys that are graduating, mm -hmm. uh, expectations for the guys coming back, uh, you know, conditioning, expectations, all that stuff. So it's just, uh, it's a long day. Mm -hmm. I think we started at uh, nine, maybe Teaks, and we finished at about five. Wow. Uh, got through every player and um, had a, one slice of pizza, I think, uh, <laughs> at, at noon there, just to keep ourselves going. And, uh, yeah, so they come in, they see, they sit with uh, Teeks and Dale and myself in, in Dale's office, and then after that they go back and uh, visit the therapist room and, and make yeah. sure that they're healthy and, uh, you know, if there's any issues, they, they know what they are and they can take that to their, you know, their home therapist, uh, yeah, yeah. whatever the case may be. So it's a busy day. Um, and, uh, yeah, like I said, it was might be the last time you see some of those guys, uh, yeah, yeah. and it's the last time... Uh, we were together as a group, so it's a, it's a hard day, but it's you know you have to embrace it and and uh, understand that it's a, a special one as yeah, well. Yeah. Sean, do you feel like you almost uh, you know some of the guys just want to stick around? You almost have to chase them out with a broom or something like that to to be able to fit everybody in in one day. Yeah, yeah, it's it's tough. You know, it's that that closet clean out day is kind of like an eerie one. You know, you kind of, you're used to walking in the room and it's like, it's loud. Guys are messing around. Guys are doing whatever they're doing. And, you know, walking into the room that day and like, you know, everyone's bag is just individually there wrapped up with their sticks and their bags packed and like well, the room's empty. It starts to get cold and it's kind of like, well, this is, this is kind of weird, but you know, it's, and like exactly what you said, you know, in between meetings, like running out and going to the bathroom or, or whatever I was doing, you know, to go back in there and to see guys just sitting in the room, you know, just sitting together and talking and you could tell like they just, they really didn't want to let it go. They didn't really want it to end. And um, that's definitely tough, tough thing to deal with, but that just goes to a testament of some of the characters of those guys. You know, I walked in there three times and Sam Subley was the last guy to leave. And he was like, he didn't leave till like five o'clock. Um, you know, Ethan Burrow, same thing. Like you just sit in the stall the whole entire day. Like, I think Ethan stayed in his clothes or in his uh, like jersey and his stuff like for almost an hour after the game. 
Um, you know, it just that just shows you how much those guys care and how much they love the they love the boys and they love the red room. It was uh, certainly hard to watch uh, the boys coming out after Game Four and seeing the family in the stands and stuff like that. It's uh, it's got to be tough. I mean, for you guys as well. You're, you know, I'm sure you grow close to these guys. I mean, all of you are are living away from home and and you know you're you're helping to develop these guys into young men and um so that's it's yeah you know, i mean it's great to hear that side of things as well and you know some of the maybe some of the positives that that come out of it i mean you've got colby now who's off to the moose to play for a little while you got connor who's already scoring in the ahl i mean you coached in the ahl you know it's a tough league to to play in i mean second best professional league in the world and mm -hmm. and uh you know there there's some positives that come out of it as well do you guys stay in contact much with the boys after the season um and and kind of to what capacity like are you checking in with training at all or yeah we'll we'll monitor, uh we'll monitor them uh, over the summer i've got uh quite a few uh players over my past years that that'll text me all the time i was just speaking to two of them today they're they're over in, in england playing um so they were you know just uh saying a quick hello so nice. we stay in touch there um you know, it's uh, usually you, you like to let everybody breathe for a few days uh, sure. after it's all over. And then and then, uh, you know, it's basically time to get back to work and you're, you're checking in on guys, see how their training's going, see how their uh, see how their summer's going. Um, so, yeah, we'll stay in touch uh, as much as we can for sure. Excellent. Sean, for yeah, yourself. I, I stay, yeah, I stay in touch with a lot of guys. Um, I don't know if, you know, obviously you're in Austria, but like. You know, I've known Kobe since he was like a little kid. Um, I've had Kobe, I've been training Kobe since he was 10 years old. So I see him every week. Um, again, Ethan Burroughs, I play golf with him. Um, he skates with me every here and there. Um, majority of you guys skate with me during the summer. So I always find a way to stay in contact with them. Um, and like I said, I, I'm just that guy. I, I get very personal with them. Um, so I, it's something my phone's always ringing. It's always going off with these guys. And um, so I definitely, I definitely stay close. And uh, just to touch on what you were saying there before, Sam said he'll probably be on his way to the American League um, sometime soon. Um, he's kind of working on his contract, and Ethan Burroughs will be heading to the East Coast for the rest of the year. Um, he signed with Iowa, and he's uh, taken off today. Um, so that's good for those guys to keep playing and keep living their dreams and to keep pushing. Excellent. Here, I mean, it's uh, you guys had an OA class that. Uh, you just, I mean, really the whole team, they were, it was a bunch of guys that even if you're not an attack fan, each person individually, you want to cheer for and you want to, you want the best for them. So that's, that's fantastic to hear. And, and uh, I'm wondering for you guys, like as, uh, as coaches, what does, uh, what does an average summer look like? I mean, maybe a little bit of golf with OAs and stuff, but uh, <laughs> you know, beyond that, I, I mean, I, you know, you got GMs that are going to do the they're going to do their deals and they're going to do the drafts and stuff like that. Or you get the trainers that are checking up on the health and, and uh, medicals of the new draftees and stuff. But as a coach, what, uh, what is like an average summer look like? Uh, you know, a lot of times you'll, you know, I've, for me anyway, I've, I usually like to go to the NHL draft and uh, get in on the, on the coaches conference there. There's always uh, lots of, you know, it's a good networking opportunity. It's good to see guys that you've played with uh, for, you know, years ago and you haven't seen in a while. Uh, the, the clinic is, is a great chance to share ideas and, um, you know, that's that's always invaluable. Uh, I know Sean's uh, big into the, uh, the off ice stuff really with his skills uh, sessions. I try to do a little bit of that as well. Uh, you mentioned a little bit of golf. There's not many hockey guys that uh, don't love to play around a golf. So yeah. uh, try to get a few of those in when when you can. But uh, yeah, it's basically just, you know, trying to stay sharp and um, you know, network with, with ideas like hockey ideas and that kind of stuff that you can uh, add to, you know, your own portfolio and, and uh, make yourself better uh, going into the next year. Awesome. Yeah, I think uh, for me, it's the majority of numbers kind of spent on the ice, um, doing skill development, doing stuff like that. Um, I'm always around doing that stuff. Again, I, I like to be like Rumset. Um, I like to do the NHL draft, uh, go to those coaches' conferences, you know, sharpen your craft, kind of get better. Um, have co different other calls with coaches, um, different other ways to get better. Um, obviously, this I think the summer will be a little bit different. Um, heading into a contract year, so I don't know what the future holds. Um, so that definitely might have a different look for me in the summer. 
Um, but you know, you just kind of take it all in stride. And at the end of the day, it's just working on crafts and just trying to get sharp and make sure everything's ready for the summer and, or for the winter and, you know, putting drills together, make sure I got my drill book ready. Um, and just need some new fresh ideas, um, you know, to throw at the wall and see if they stick. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, big, uh, big team barbecue as well. You guys, uh, do that in the summer. Is that something you're hoping to make an appearance? And Sean, I'm wondering, I mean, for yourself is, uh, what are the odds that you're bringing Tyson up for, uh, for a good barbecue up in Owen Sound? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if, uh, if the cards, if the cards play all right, uh, bring him up for the day and he can enjoy the softball. And, you know, I brought him up a few times last year and the boys love having him around the room. So, um, he's already familiar with a bunch of them. So I, I'm sure he would love that too. So, um, it's definitely on the plate, definitely on the table, uh, definitely as an offer. Yeah, excellent. Um, maybe you guys could kind of talk us through a little bit of that, uh, what it's like bringing in these new draftees. I mean, that's coming up pretty soon here. And I know there's uh, a big uh, softball game with all of them to kind of introduce them to Owen Sound and whatnot. Uh, do you guys find, like, is that a good team botting experience for them already? Just kind of get a little bit of the nerves out, get some competitiveness going on? Yeah, I think so. it's a great, uh, you know, it's because when they they come in and then they go back and then they come back in the for training camp and it's not completely new, you know, you're mm -hmm. not uh, coming in like a deer in the headlights. You've you've already seen, you know, you've seen some of the guys. So nothing better than coming into a new situation. You have a little bit of familiarity uh, with the you know, with the building, the town, the players that you're going to be skating with. Um, you know, it's I wasn't here last summer with at the barbecue, but I know those those type of events are always fun. Sure, a little softball. Uh, if anybody's like me, I never met a barbecue steak I didn't like. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, it's a good meal, good time, a uh, good chance to meet a few people, and and then you know, uh, the plan is to test them too. So sure, uh, they can see how they're doing uh, with their fitness, and if they're a little bit behind, they still have time to to get it in uh, gear before yeah, yeah. training camp because you don't want to come in uh, if you show up out of shape at training camp it's too late so you're, you're going to be chasing it all year so right right uh, so it's a good opportunity for a lot of different reasons to have that uh, the barbecue excellent well gentlemen thank you uh, thank you so much uh, for coming on the show I mean it uh, it can't be easy to to basically every day uh, be giving it to the organization through the uh, through the hockey season away from family but uh I mean, on behalf of all of the fans in Owen Sound, I want to thank you guys for uh, what you brought to the team and, and what you gave to the guys, um, you know, and, and in turn, what that provides to Owen Sound uh, and to the fans out there. If you guys uh, happen to see Darren or Sean around town, make sure, uh, make sure you guys say thank you. I mean, it's, uh, you know, say thanks, win, lose, perfect season or perfect storm. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, coaches have one of the most criticized jobs. And <laughs> I know you guys won't say it, but I'll say it for you. Um, you know, make sure you guys give these guys a, a thumbs up, a pat on the back, something like that. Uh, it's never easy to be away from your sports system like that for mm -hmm. a year. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't doubt for a second that, uh, you know, both you guys, Darren and Sean, gave it your all this year and gave everything you had to these players. And, and we really thank you for that. So on behalf of the fans, thank you guys. Uh, thank you to all of you fans as well for watching Attack Wrap here on Rogers TV. We'll be back next week to talk with General Manager Dale DeGray about all things attack season as well as the draft. Coming up this weekend, make sure you tune in Rogers TV. We'll have the draft for you Friday night and Saturday. Connect with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com. I did it. I need it. A hero gave it. And I am alive. As an organ donor, you can save up to eight lives and enhance the lives of 75 others. Please go to our website. Pledge a gift of life. You'll be glad you did. We are in Canada, where Canada is about to celebrate our talent, our people. This moment is changing your life forever. I promise you. Wow.